Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. You know, I'm often asked about exit strategies and I remind people in any presentation as much as I can, uh, the time to develop your exit strategies when things are going well. A lot of investors, traders wait until too late. They wait for the market to go against you. They wait for your position to stop working, the price to go down, and then you start to think about, well, how should I exit this position? And uh, it, it kills me a little bit when I hear people asking, about those types of examples because the best time to develop your exit strategy is before the problem is happening. Uh, when you're learning to fly an airplane, you're taught to develop your emergency plan when things are great. When the plane's flying straight level, everything's fine, that's when you develop your emergency plan. You don't wait until your engine cuts out to figure out what you're gonna do in that scenario. And I think for investors, it should be sort of the same way. So today, we'll talk about some of the basic ways to think about your exit strategy using trailing stops. So I'm often asked about exit strategies and trailing stops, how to think about getting out of positions that aren't working anymore. Before we get to uh, some charts and look at some examples together, I just want to remind you, if you like this sort of thinking about investor decision making, behavioral finance, technical analysis, if all that's of interest to you, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. It'd be great to have you along this ride with us. Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We would very much appreciate it back. Finally, put a comment below the video. We're going to talk about one particular stock, Disney. What do you see? for the stock over the next one to three months. You think this is a thumbs up or a thumbs down and why? Leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Let's get to the chart. So I'm often asked about, uh, as I mentioned, exit strategies, and we're gonna look at one particular example, Disney, uh, which I think provides some good illustrations of how an exit strategy could be of help. And I have to point out, obviously, as always, I'm not making a recommendation of any sort to do uh, this with Disney or any other uh, stocks or ETFs, I'm just trying to illustrate some of the different ways. And, and to be honest with you, the, the exit strategy that it, that works for you really is going to be particular to your investment style. There are a lot of uh, different ways you can think about uh, exiting positions, and it really depends, I think, a lot of ways on your risk profile or your risk assessment. Some people have a higher risk appetite. Some people have a lower risk appetite. Some people are a little more aggressive, a little more conservative. And depending on how you would describe yourself as a trader or as an investor, the ways you actually use some of these uh, stops are, are are going to be impacted. So I can show you some of the ways that I, I found investors use trailing stops. I can show you some of the methodologies. At the end of the day, it's going to be up to you and you and, and how you're managing your portfolios, your holdings to, uh, to make your own decisions. But I'm happy to show you some of the ways that I have found helpful and that others I've worked with have found uh, helpful. So a couple of ways. I mean, the, the basic ways that I would think of uh, of, of exits are probably fourfold, um, maybe maybe three. I would say number one is the price breaks some sort of particular uh, level, and this would be uh, the price breaks a support or resistance line. Would be the main uh, support or resistance level would be the main way to think about that. Uh, the second would be some sort of moving average break, some sort of lagging indicator like a moving average. Uh, a 50 day moving average is one we'll look at in particular here. And uh, when the stock breaks, when the price breaks its moving average, can be pretty uh, can be pretty important. The third way, I'm, I'm now developing five ways. As I'm talking, I'm coming up with five ways. The third way would be some sort of more complicated uh, tool, something based on average true range, like the chandelier exit, which probably outside the scope of this video that we're going to do, but maybe I'll record another video where I deal particularly with things like the chandelier exit, the parabolic systems developed by Wells Wilder. Those are more a little more complicated ways to, uh, you know, to determine an exit strategy based on lagging behind the price movements. Um, the third way would be a very sim simplistic uh, percent move, right? So when the stock breaks eight percent below an, a high, uh, that would be uh, that would be the exit. And then the fifth way would be some sort of indicator like RSI, like the RSI breaking below forty would be a way that you might you might think about, um, you know, a, a transition from bullish phase to bearish phase. I could probably group any sort of trailing stop into one of those five categories. Um, today, we're just going to deal with the first couple. We'll deal with a price breakdown, a support and resistance break, and also a moving average break. And again, maybe I'll, I'll record some future videos dealing with some of those other concepts in a little more detail. Uh, but just to give you an idea of the scope of what we could talk about here. So a pure support and resistance break, I think, is one of the most simple ways to, to think about uh, a trailing stop because what that tells you is, you know, if you are long a particular stock or if you if you are expecting the price to go higher, this is basically indicating that the price is no longer going higher. If you have to remember Charles Dow 
over 100 years ago, came up with this basic concept of trend. And you defined a trend based on the highs and the lows. If the highs are getting higher and the lows are getting higher, the stock is in an uptrend. When that stops happening, when the highs are not getting higher, when the lows are getting lower, uh, that tells you that the uptrend is over and the trend is going down. So looking at the chart of Disney, and we'll look particularly at, at two points here. One is uh, you know, the first quarter of 2021, which is when the trend really reversed from uptrend to downtrend. We'll also look back at February, March of 2020, because for a lot of stocks that uh, illustrates a really good time to have a, uh, a stop in place. If you look back here, right, and look at how the stock broke out uh, in November, a lot of stocks sort of broke out of this consolidation phase. The S&P itself was in a consolidation phase September and October of 2020. A lot of those charts resolved to the upside, including uh, Walt Disney. You can see we continue a pattern now of higher highs, higher lows. We pulled back here to the 50-day moving average in January, higher highs, higher lows. All of a sudden, we make a lower high, probably here, I would say, in, uh, in March to April. We then make a lower low, really here in May. And so that's illustrating this transition from uptrend to downturn, right? At the very least, we're no longer going higher. At most, we're starting to undercut those previous lows. And it's an indication that things are starting to get less uh, less bullish. And depending on whether you decide this is a is an undercut, I could argue that, you know, we're sort of holding support here in April, and then we break below it. If you're, you know, what some people would do is maybe take half the position off there and then complete the transition away of the, from the position uh, there in May, I could see the argument for both of those. But at some point, you know, here, you would no longer be considering this an uptrend. This is now transitioned from an uptrend of higher highs and higher lows to a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. And somewhere along the way, you'd get that indication that that's the case. If you look back here in uh, January, February of 2020, we've started to make lower highs in, uh, in price, and we're now actually making lower lows as well. And I think undercutting that January low was key. It actually gapped below that, which was a sort of an exclamation point to the breakdown, right? So if you're long Disney here, you're now holding a stock that is making a lower high and now making a lower uh, low as well. And I think that's what completed the transition to a downtrend. So, you know, the whole idea is uh, with trailing stops, I was told early on by a mentor, um, all large losses begin as small losses. So the whole point with trailing stops is to, you know, is to give up, you know, so you, you basically held the stock a little too long. You haven't, you know, you, 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 you're, you're holding a stock now that's going lower. Um, the, the trick though, is to limit the losses to when it's gone down a little bit and not hold it for when it's gone down a lot. And that's the, the real key. So, you know, selling it after an initial uh, loss is, uh, is a little bit painful, but you're basically preventing that huge decline uh, the waterfall declined February into March. Over the next four weeks, the stock just continued to pound lower and lower uh, and, uh, and give up a lot of the gains from, uh, from recent months and if not recent years. So those are the places, the ways that a, a, a simple support and resistance stop would be helpful. And so, you know, on an, in an uptrend, you're looking for when the stock breaks a previous support level as an indication that things were getting, uh, were, were getting pretty bad. And that's what it would have told you there in uh, February to when, you, when you undercut the, uh, the January low. I think you also would have gotten that signal here in April and or May when you undercut the previous uh, swing lows and also when you made a lower high in both of those scenarios. Now, since then, Disney's sort of been sideways. It's been choppy. So it went down a little bit more uh, and overall has been OK. I mean, it hasn't broken down much further than that. The kicker, though, is the relative strength has been really bad because a lot of other stocks obviously has gone have gone higher. So owning a stock like Disney over the last six months, it's really not just the the absence of positive returns it's what's called the opportunity cost right when you own disney you're choosing not to put that money into something else and most other stocks have done better than this chart unfortunately for the last six months and that's the challenge when you're uh, investing in equities that's why relative strength can be a really helpful indicator because uh you know owning stocks with relative strength is going down tells you you're basically not owning a better chart right now now, let's look also at a time when that indicator did not work particularly well, I would argue, and that's probably here, September, October into November, right? So if you look at September, October, you made a lower high, you made a new swing low, uh, that would have certainly suggested to me to be out of the name uh, here as we you know, undercut those previous lows. Uh, and it didn't work super well, because very quickly afterwards, you, you rotated higher. So I think with any sort of trailing stop the challenges it gets you out of everything it sometimes it gets you out uh when uh when it would actually rotates higher so i think recognizing when the price continued to push higher recognizing in november that you've now broken above the the previous high 
and that that trailing stop, while it you know it prevented a climactic loss, it actually got you out a little early because the price went higher. I, I don't have a problem with that because the whole point of a stop is that it's going to get you out and prevent climactic negative movements. At some point, it might get you out a little bit um, you know early, and uh, and that's okay. I that that's part of the the cost of doing business or the the cost of preventing climactic loss. Sometimes it gets you out. Uh, when the trend uh, continues higher, so recognizing that the trend has now uh, has now uh, uh, resumed and that the uptrend is now in place, we're now uh, you know eclipsing the previous high would be an indication to get back into it and to ride the price uh, on the next legs higher. The second thing I mentioned just very briefly are moving averages, and I think what what you see with the S and P five hundred right now is the value value of using a very simple. Uh, stop loss using the 50-day moving average. This is kind of a busier chart. I'm sorry for that. But if you look at the blue, the navy blue line here, that is the 50-day moving average. This is my main daily S&P chart. And you can see that for the course of 2021, we have closed below the 50-day moving average just maybe three days, I think, uh, over the entire year. Uh, and every single time we've closed below it one day and then immediately closed back above it the next day. And I think this uh, chart of the S&P 500 is a reminder that in a persistent uptrend, using something very simple, just like the 50-day moving average, for me, that is my main trend following tool for the S&P now. As long as we remain above the, an upward sloping 50-day moving average, the trend is positive. Making new all-time highs, that's encouraging. Uh, making higher lows, that's positive too. But remaining above the 50-day, because that has been what has performed so well uh, in the last uh, eight months or so is what's so uh, is why it's so uh, compelling to me. So once at some point we will close below the 50 day moving average and stay there, we will remain below the 50 day moving average, we will undercut the previous low and we will no longer make a new high. Uh, and when those three things happen, a lower high, a lower low and closing below the 50 day moving average, that's when it will tell me that this uptrend is no longer in place until then higher highs, higher lows above the 50-day moving average is certainly positive. So thinking of a trailing stop for the S&P, the 50-day moving average is as good as any I could come up with for you uh, for you right now. So that is the chart of Disney and why uh, support, just using a previous support level, can be a, a pretty decent uh, stop, uh, a trailing stop. As long as we remain and, and keep making higher lows, the trend is positive. We stop making uh, higher highs and start making lower lows, that's an indication that the trend is reversing. That's why it was really helpful, I think, first into the second quarter of this year, indicating that Disney was no longer leadership. Uh, also, uh, you know, a lot of stocks in January, February of 2020 gave you a real clear indication of undercutting those previous lows. And again, it might give you false signals like it did in October of 2020, but overall, the goal is to prevent climactic losses, which is what you saw in uh, February, March of 2020. That is how you use uh, price support for a trailing stop. So folks, that's it. There are five different ways that I listed out to uh, to think about trailing stops. We talked briefly about two of those. Number one, using price levels as support and resistance. We particularly looked at uh, the Walt Disney Company and, uh, and using that as a way to manage downside risk uh, during an uptrend. And at this point, still has not broken uh, price support from those May lows and potentially rotating higher or break above 185 on Disney would could be an interesting indication of further upside. I'd be very curious from you in the comment section below, what do you see next for uh, for Disney? Do you see more likely a break above 185 continue the uh, previous uptrend or a break below maybe 170, 168, which would be the previous swing lows? What do you see as most likely and why? Also, if you like this sort of thinking about investor decision-making, behavioral finance, uh, trading tactics using technical analysis, uh, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. It'll be great to have you along this ride with us. Also, give the video a like if you liked it. We would very much appreciate that back. From everyone here at Mark and Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, be safe. We'll talk to you again soon.